DC Multiverse! How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Today I've got the Grim Knight in my sights from McFarland's DC Multiverse action figure line. The packaging for this is going to be typical for the series, so I don't really feel like spending a whole lot of time on it. I don't really need to talk about it that much because you can see it. You're looking at it. There it is. Let's move on to the figure. The Grim Knight is not unique to the rest of the figures in the series in that it comes with a fancy dancy trading card. As you can see, it's the same picture as on the back of the box. Here's a little bio. Feel free to pause to read that if you'd like to. And it also comes with your typical McFarland Toys circular black DC multiverse stand. Now, honestly, this is definitely not one of my favorite versions of Batman. He makes a great antagonist, for sure, but he's kind of like the Punisher and Batman mixed together. Like, if Batman had all that massive training and skill that he's already undergone, but also decided he was going to be that Batman who crossed the line using guns. I don't see a Batarang on this guy. There's a machine gun, he's got a grenade launcher, and his back is just covered in guns. Here we have an M16, a rifle with a scopey do, some other guns that I have no idea what they are, and another gun right here that I have no idea what it is. They just fit directly onto his back via this little peg hole. You just push them in and there they are. The figure itself does look pretty darn spectacular. McFarlane clearly knows what he's doing when it comes to sculpting these bad boys. And I think that it looks like a pretty accurate representation of the source material. But the details for this bat really are quite fantastic. I do kind of wish there was some paint deco on this. I mean, there's a little bit of silver on some of the parts for his like buckles and whatnot. You've got like some light grayish silver paint. But for the most part, it really is just all black. All the strapping and everything is all just black, which is accurate to the source material, I suppose, but it, it's just a little weensy bit boring looking. You've got his gauntlets right here, completely different. There are only two spiked. These gauntlets are gauntlets that mean business for sure. And then look at his bat underneath here. It's hard to have a little peekaroo there just because these really are stuck to his body. They're glued right here at the shoulder. So it's, it's difficult for me to move the strapping out of the way for you to get a look at it. Either way, you can see there is an entire bat sculpted underneath there. I like his little batty bat knee pads. Those are, are actually kind of cool. Those, my eyes were immediately drawn to that part of the sculpt. He's got his little knife right there. More ammo pouches, likely with magazines. I mean, let's face it, he's covered in guns and ammunition magazines. That's pretty much all he's got on. They're even up here. This guy comes prepared. This Batman's face is actually really cool as well. I like this head sculpt. The forehead is perhaps maybe a little bit too small. It, like it goes in that way maybe a little bit too much. But no doubt, I think that a lot of people are going to buy this figure and likely do a Boil and Pop head swap to put this head on the other Batman body. Now the articulation for this bad boy is as follows. It's a McFarlane, so you know the head's going to be on a ball peg. It's going to go around about that. This Batman also does have a hinge right here in the armpits as well as what you would call a butterfly hinge. Hinge. It really actually doesn't help with how far in the arms can go. However, it does help a little bit with how far back they can go. He's got the rotation at the bicep. He's got the double jointed elbows. That's as much as you're going to be able to crunch those bad boys up. He's got the articulation by way of a rounded hinge in the wrists. Very ugly, but it does actually give him a pretty good range of motion there. In his torso here, he does have two pieces of articulation, one in the waist and one up here under his chest. They're two rounded ball hinges. They're actually pretty useful. A lot of round and round, bobbly, wibbly, wobbly action from Batman's body here. The Grim Knight also has that McFarlane Toys groin that we all know about. The hinges up in the inside here that do offer a pretty darn good range of motion in and out and all around. There's also some rotative motion in the inside of his thighs there. Kind of like that of a thigh cut, but it originates right up in the inside here. Double jointed knees on both legs. And then ankles that have the rounded hinge right here that's also an ankle pivot, as well as toe articulation. Comparatively speaking, here's Batman alongside Detective Comics 1000, and now he's beside the Devastator, and now he's beside the Murder Machine, and now he's beside the Dawnbreaker, and now he's beside the Batman Who Laughs. And here he is with all of them. So now that we've gone through everything, I've looked at this figure very thoroughly, but also very briefly. What do I think about him? You know, I, I like him. I think that if I had seen him hanging on the pegs and I was a kid, this would have been one of the ones that I picked up even if I didn't know who it is. For one, the face just is a dead giveaway that this is Batman. And then two, he's really badass looking and he's really, he just looks like he means business. This, if there was a Batman in real life, as much as I like a Batman that doesn't kill, I mean, let's face it, if Batman was going up against mobsters and drug dealers and some of the worst that society has to offer, he probably would have to kill some people at some points. 
You couldn't be a vigilante like Batman and not take a life sometimes. That's why Batman works in the comics, but wouldn't work in real life. There's only so far that bat-shaped shuriken and boomerangs and martial arts can take you. That's why I like comics as escapism and not to mimic real life that much, which this Batman does. <laughs> in some ways, he mimics real life more than comic books. Anyway, super friends, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Hopefully you found this video to be some kind of an enjoyable, useful waste of time for the day. If you did, you know where the like button is. You can leave me a like so I know that I've done something right. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, I invite you today to become a super friend and join the DC squad by hitting the subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Have a super awesome, fantastic DC day and take care.